Hey guys, Tyrant up here, and today we're taking a look at the version 4.0 changes for the Winter Balance Patch Preview. Starting out with the general changes, mobile anti-tank guns, so this is anti-tank guns that can move, not the Pack 43 or the 17 pounder. While double anti-tank guns are strong in smaller game modes, we do not want to impact their offensive performance or population. Instead, we want to focus on counterplay by offering players additional options to break through an anti-tank gun wall and make overextended anti-tank guns easier to punish. All mobile anti-tank gun squads have an innate received accuracy penalty of 10% of the stacks with the type of entity that recruits the gun. For example, conscripts, their target size gets increased by 10%. Same story for Panzer Grenadiers. So yeah, now if you catch anti-tank guns out of position, it'll be easier to decrew them with, you know, small arms damage, stuff like that. And, you know, tanks if they've got pintle machine guns and stuff as well, but not, like, explosive weapons. Mobile mortar smoke, and we've got a bunch of mortars listed here, so not the mortar pit. And I don't see the 120mm mortar listed up there as well for Soviets. To further encourage the usage of smoke against defensive positions, mortars are being made more responsive and are gaining an additional smoke shell per barrage. Their wind-down times are also being reduced to speed up how quickly a mortar can saturate a target area with smoke shells. Scatter bonuses at VET 3 have also been removed from smoke barrages to maintain decent area coverage. So pivot time's going down, so they'll be more responsive when you're changing the angle on them. Smoke barrage wind down time going down from 2 seconds to 0.375, so that's a big reduction in wind down. Number of smoke shells per barrage going up from 3 to 4. And scatter bonuses at VET 3 no longer apply to smoke barrages. So it's probably for the best because you kind of want your smoke to scatter quite a lot so it covers a large amount of area. So nice changes there to some uh, mortar smoke. So we're testing the revised mortar smoke, this one with the Aussie mortar. So I fired a shell in this direction. We're facing exactly in this direction. Then we're going to switch over to this direction, fire some smoke barrages over here. We'll see how responsive it is. It's the uh, positioning of it. Now it should fire four shells. Now put it at VET 3 so we can see the difference in scatter. Alright, now testing the smoke barrage in the live game. Hmm, it does seem a bit slower so far already. the scatter that seemed a bit tighter but mm. all right the broom bear and the bulldozer Sherman these units will now have their pintles automatically fire at infantry when in hold fire mode so it's kind of a nice change because you know those are pretty good at attack grounding you want to direct your shots because the you know the projectile takes a while to land so you kind of want to target where the squad's going to be rather than where it is currently quite often and that means you're on hold fire that means machine gun wasn't firing so now that's not going to be the case anymore but leaving those on hold fire they will actually attack uh, infantry nearby so that's kind of cool u.s forces officer transfer orders given how u.s forces is given a free officer as part of their teching structure we are giving the players an option to call off the officers to avoid taking up population this is primarily for the late game where a player back ticks but does not want to be burdened by a fresh officer squad. So in your new ability on the barracks, officer transfer orders. And you can uh, get rid of your officer, lieutenant, captain or major. But does not give you any resources back. So yeah, I think in most game situations or basically all game situations, you want to keep your officers. But you know maybe if you're pushing to 100 and beyond... US forces you might want to just get rid of one of those fresh officers if you're doing a side tech but yeah pretty uh, fringe situations in which this will be useful I think. So here's a look at the new ability officer transport as you can see it's here in the barracks where you build your rifleman and so on from. Got a couple officers here we're going to test it out on them we've got the lieutenant. Understood. 
Okay, so it's the cooldown, not the, the cooldown. Will probably matter in many no. matches, but there we go. Mm, interesting. I'd hate for somebody to set their rally point with V and then accidentally click off as to transfer orders and transfer away the officer. I wonder if this should be like over in this position instead, a bit further away from something. But most people just set their rally points with right click anyway, so maybe that won't matter too much. I also wanted to see, because you can see from the mini map down bottom left, that it appears I can cast this from anywhere on the map. I want to see what would happen if. Let her retreat past the enemy squad. You can see the uh, health of the squad up here. Top right, so they will take damage. Still will be able to get shot at as they are getting transferred. Another thing that occurred to me for the officer transfer orders is that will you get your weapons back when the unit has been withdrawn? I imagine not, but I've made a whole bunch of lieutenants. Equip them all with double bars. And let's see if any of them drop the as they get them withdrawn. I don't think so though. But I thought it was worth testing. So there we go, there was maybe like 10 or more lieutenants all equipped with double bars and none of them got dropped as they had finished getting transferred. So yeah, you won't get any weapons back if you use this ability. The M181mm mortar, it's getting a cost reduction going down from 240 to 230 manpower. The M7 light anti-vehicle mine, this is one of the rear echelon build. Build time is going down from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. These don't see much play, so maybe uh, players will make a bit more use of these light mines now. The pack outer, with the lethality decrease to the pack outer, the unit is having its sixth man returned to help with its limited survivability, so you know, can't retreat like mortars, particularly against late game rocket artillery. So crew size is going back up from 5 to 6, population unchanged at 8. The M15 anti-air half-track, to give the captain more anti-sniper power, the machine guns on the M15 are gaining bonuses against snipers. The anti-air mode for the M15 is also being toned down as the M15 has multiple guns dedicated to killing aircraft while other anti-air units only have one. So the machine guns now have a 15% accuracy bonus against snipers. The anti-air mode 37mm chance to destroy planes is going down from 30% to 20% but remains at 30% when not in anti-air mode. So we saw in my testing that the anti-air half-track was very strong when in anti-air mode, but it was kind of weak when not in anti-air mode, doesn't get the uh, 360 revolution, so that, I think that kind of does make sense. We had 30% when not in anti-air mode, which would kind of leave it slightly worse than the quad, slight, slightly worse than the flak half-track when not in anti-air mode, but when, when in anti-air mode, it was uh, very strong. So we'll have to compare the time to kill on those planes now. Testing out the A half track here after those issues we saw in the last patch about not really firing on the move that well. So targeting squads, it can sometimes act a bit weird now. But yeah, it's moving performance on the machine guns seems to be back to normal. I want to test the sniper here. The a half track chasing after it with the machine guns only firing. Oh, got a nasty burst there. So yeah, it looks like it will be pretty effective at taking down snipers on retreat just with the machine guns firing after this change. All right, testing the revised anti-air performance now with a slight nerf to the uh, 37 mm gun on the a half track. Same test as we've been doing so far. See how long it takes to shoot down all of these planes from sector assault. So exactly four minutes. F 4.28, so uh, ran good there, or maybe, yeah, ran good. <laughs> Just as good as it was before. Round two of testing of the anti-air performance now on the AA half track. See how the nurse affected it, start exactly 
exactly 30 seconds so uh, I feel like that's basically exactly the same as it did in my previous testing so I didn't even notice the uh, nerf to the 37mm gun in these particular tests I could run more but out of two tests it seems to be the same Moving on to the British, starting out with Royal Engineers, they are being moved to their headquarters to encourage different builds from the British, help provide map control over the more expensive infantry section and provide a cheaper supporting unit. A number of their abilities and construction options are being pushed back to avoid having a significant impact in the early game. Now trained at the headquarters rather than platoon command post, destroy cover, heat grenade and fort assembly require platoon command post. So this is a pretty interesting change, you know, Royal Engineers are now the ones with the capping bonus, so maybe you want to build a squad of Engineers early to help cap up the map really fast. And their combat performance is reasonable, I think they're pretty close to on par with Pioneers, obviously they don't get the sight bonus of Pioneers, so interesting this change to Royal Engineers. Medics, given the changes to Royal Engineers and the timing of most healing options for other factions, Medics are being moved to Platoon Command Post now trained at the platoon command post rather than the headquarters. Universal Carrier is receiving a slight nerf by adding a fuel cost to the unit. Its effectiveness in the early game warrants a slight delay to British teching. Fuel cost to 5 for the Universal Carrier. Moving on to OKW, starting out with the Raketenwerfer. It's having its gun target size increase from 10 to 20 to match other anti-tank guns. So, you know, when it's decrewed now, you'll be able to hit it more easily, kill it more easily with your tanks or anti-tank guns, stuff like that. So it's a nice change there for the Raketen. The LAIG, in line with the mortar smoke changes, the LAIG is having its reload reduced on its smoke barrage. So the reload's going down from 2.3 to 3.6 to 0.55, 1.85. So it's going to yeah, reload quite a lot faster now on smoke. So I figured I'd do the same test for the LAIG that I did for the mortars earlier. I'd have it spin around 90 degrees, fire off a smoke barrage, see how that goes, see how long it takes. It was time to uh, have three shells dropped. So it looks like a slightly more smoke coverage than mortars, maybe just scattered more than the tests I did. Let's have a look at their times for that. The Panzer II looks. The looks is being made into a proper detection vehicle to reinforce its role as an infantry hunter. Its penalties against heavy cover and garrisons are also being reduced to make the looks more effective at attacking infantry in defensive positions. Detection range going up from 15 to 25, so it's a pretty long detection range now. Damage modifier against heavy cover and garrisons from 0.25 slash 0.03, So it's going to perform a lot better against heavy cover and garrisons. I have played a game uh, since this change. I played a mod game myself. I didn't notice a huge difference in heavy cover, but I have heard that it's quite strong against garrisons. So I've put a combat engineer inside this building, and I want to see how fast the looks will take it down. That is really fast. So about one minute, one second. Okay, now it's down to one model. It seems to be going a lot more slowly. Okay, so about 32 seconds, I think that was. Okay, now from a similar range, but this time against you know, this side of the building where you know, units are a bit more spread out inside the building. Maybe that'll make a bit of a difference. I want to compare this between the T70, which is kind of why I'm doing it this way. So that was... About 30, about 40 seconds, I guess, a little bit longer. And now the T70 against the combat engineer, same building, more comparison. Looks like the T70 doing a lot more damage to the building's health itself, at least initially.
So that was about 52 seconds. A lot more than the looks, which was uh, th about 32 seconds. So yeah, the looks appears to be way more lethal. And this is in the favorable test for the T70 as well, with, you know, most of the models clumped up on this side where the AOE can kind of do its best. So yeah, that's... Okay, the looks is very damaging compared to the T70. Now the T70 against the side of the building with only three windows. See how that goes. A bad start, first two shots. Okay, connecting with the fence. Okay, it's off to a shocker here. Let's see if we can make up for lost time. Do remember that the T70 did get nerfed this patch as well. Reload on the main gun. Effectively got increased. Okay, so a minute five. The looks was, what was it, like 52 seconds? So this is the live version for comparison, live version of the looks. See how it goes compared to the patch version. I'm sure it's going to be much worse, but how much worse? So that was about 144, 145, about 44, 45 seconds there for the looks compared to the 32 on the patch. So yeah, pretty big buff by comparison. And the live version now again, and it's the three window side of the building. Okay, 1 minute 2, 1 minute 3, round about there. Compare that to, what was it, 38 seconds for the patch? I mean, that's a big difference there in time to kill. And now the live patch T70 against the combat engineer inside the building. I'm expecting the T70 to perform quite a lot better in this one. Not only does it have the better reload, but also the uncapped AOE. Especially against this side of the building, that might be relevant. Three seconds. Okay. Try that one again. Hopefully the building doesn't collapse this time. Looks like the shots this time are more targeted towards these windows and see these ones, which seem to be scattering like kind of through the building onto this side. So it's doing so much building health damage before. Okay, about a minute one second. So you can see that in the live version, the looks in the T70 perform almost identically in this test, which was a little bit surprising to me. I thought the T70 was stronger against buildings than the looks. And in the patch, the looks gets buffed a considerable amount, and the T70 seems to feel the hurt on the four window side. Perhaps that's the three model damage cap coming into effect. The Hetzer target size is being increased from 15 to 17. So yeah, 15 is very small. Anti-tank guns and stuff will be missing a lot, but 17 I think is still slightly smaller than most medium tanks. But now VET-1 reduces that back down to the original target size of 15. So yeah, the Hetzer with the new tech timings coming in with the Hetzer Rush can be quite strong. So this is just a slight nerf to it, like right out the gate. Anti-tank guns, head and anti-tank, going to be more effective against it. Won't miss so much. Also, yeah, Infantry Company and Battle Phase 1. Changes to offset ticking have been reverted due to how they impact strategies that do not rely on call-ins. Further adjustments will be made to focus on the commander infantry call-ins rather than the tech. Changes to fuel costs reverted. So this change was where tier 1 tech structure where you build grenadiers, mortar snipers from. That fuel was getting moved to battle phase 1. That's now getting reverted.
This should mean that like double MG, double Pyre strategies should still be, you know, somewhat viable. Ostrupin. To delay Ostrupin without impacting other strategies, we are moving them to tier one with the changes to tech being reverted. This will put the deployment time of Ostrupin on par with Grandius. Reverted changes from earlier versions of the patch are now trained from the infantry company. 25 second build time. 200 manpower cost. So yeah, this is a pretty big nerf to Ostrupin. You know, you'll have to build the tech structure with your pie so you won't be able to run out onto the map and instantly start capping it up. It's gonna slow down your map control, your fuel, your munitions. On top of that, it's kind of like a manpower nerf to the Ostrupin because you have to build the tech structure which you previously would have skipped. So yeah, pretty big nerfs there to Ostrupin. So with this kind of capping order, the timings actually line up a bit awkwardly. Kind of capping up more on this side and less on this side because that second Ostrupin squad seems to arrive like super slow. So there we are, about 2 minutes 35. I think in live to capture this much, well, excluding this point here, I think it was, was uh, 2 minutes. So it's a pretty big nerf compared to the live version and the speed that the Ostrupin come out. I think you'd like notice it like, yeah. So yeah, pretty, pretty big nerfs there to the Ostrupin with this kind of strategy. Not only, yeah, do you have to build this with your pie, slows down your capping, then you, you know, effectively have to pay more for the Ostrupin as well. But it does mean that they have Faust right out of the gate, so they won't be vulnerable to like uh, M3A1 scout cars, stuff like that, which, you know, yeah, potentially, you know, someone got buffed with the tier 1 starts, the penals, this patch as well, so interesting there. Soviet's grenade package. We are merging Molotovs and anti-tank grenades into one package. This will make both grenade abilities cheaper than they once were separately. So Molotovs and AT grenades getting merged. Cost 150 manpower and 15 fuel. Tripwire flare mines. Given how cost-effective tripwire mines were thanks to the ability to inflict a model loss, provide vision, and are readily available on conscripts and combat engineers, the cost is being increased to better reflect their performance. The cost is going up from 10 to 15. You do remember as well earlier this patch that now the tripwire flare mines will kill vetted grenadiers again as well. So yeah, a slight nerf here. I mean, now it's going to put their performance kind of like model for model in line with mines, or maybe even better than mines because, you know, quite often a squad runs over a mine, only one model will get hit by it. So yeah, tripwire fully have mines, slight nerf to this. They do get spammed a lot in the high level games. Conscripts. The sandbag changes that were applied to other factions will now apply to conscripts in the early game to encourage more mobility and positioning. Conscripts will build items faster once they have veterancy as they are reliant on their sandbags during the mid-game period. Sandbag build time is going up from 13 seconds to 18 and VET1 grants a 35% build speed bonus. So yeah, just nerfing sandbags right at the start of the game, but you know, VET1 you can get that pretty early on, so not going to be hurting you too much outside of the very early stages. Mobilized reserves, the conscript munition upgrade, reverted change to veterancy gain, will now once again gain 20% veterancy when upgraded, and that's kind of combined with the uh, change down here. Mobilized reserves global upgrade, changes to conscript veterancy are being reverted. So yeah, now, by getting mobilized reserves, you won't automatically get the veterancy. It's going back onto the munitions upgrade, like it is in the live version. Reverted change to mechanized armor company now grants the upgrade for free once again. So yeah, you get mobilized reserves for free at tier four once again, but you still have the option of taking it at tier three. And some people said that that was quite strong, like rushing it out as fast as possible. So you may still want to go for that option, especially now 
you don't need the uh, Molotov AT grenade package conscripts to get this upgrade. It does make it more attractive. And yeah, still going to have some buffs for uh, penals in this as well. So interesting stuff there for mobilized reserves. M5 half track, the end air chance for the M5 is still being fine tuned to be more reliable without the ability to instantly destroy planes. AA chance is going up from 2% to 3%, gains forced reloadability when upgraded to the M5 quad. So yeah, I think that's a justified change. We saw my testing was pretty much like the weakest anti-air vehicle, which is, you know, a little bit worse for Soviets because unlike OKW, the flak half track was, you know, like marginally better than the uh, than the quad. They don't have like pintles on many of their tanks. They don't have the uh, flak base to assist them at shooting down planes. So it does need to be a little bit better and nice to see there. Slight buff. Still coming like way down from what it is in live. I think live was 10% down to 3%. So still a big nerf, but should make it uh, quite a lot better than it was in my initial testing. All right, testing out the revised anti-air of the quad now with the 3% chance. I think in the initial patch, it was doing about 40 seconds. One time it shot down all the planes. One time it missed one. Compared to the flak half track, which was about 30. And we just saw the A half track earlier in this, which was also around 30. Wow, this is how they're running really bad. Okay, there it goes. That was 55 seconds. That's the longest to date. So I don't know what happened there. But uh, that may be some bad RNG. I don't know. Round two on the quad. Plane flying off there, bad signs. It's about 40 seconds, so I mean, that appears unchanged from what it was before. I don't know, maybe it's just bad RNG. I guess I can run that one more time. So we're going to put this on prioritized aircraft this time. I didn't have that on before, but I don't think that makes a difference. Not on this vehicle, at least. We saw it maybe will make a difference. A half track for US forces. Third test on this. But so far, it seems like the quad's still the worst by a decent margin. Okay, so 40 seconds again. So yeah, it, it, I mean, it doesn't look changed to me at all. These are like basically the exact same times that did pre-patch. In fact, one even worse, right? It's like 55 seconds or something. So yeah, still seems like the quad is by far the worst anti-air at the moment. RAM. The majority of changes to RAM are being reverted. The main issues are linked to certain off-map abilities, though we are replacing the complete stun RAM provided to give vehicles hit by this ability some chance to maneuver out of off maps. Reverted all changes, see below for updated lists. So yeah, all the changes we've seen so far, the VET1, the health threshold, just forget about them. Ram inflicted criticals, the crazy ones, main gun crits, heavy engine damage and immobilized, those are still getting removed. So the crazy like 2% or whatever, low, super low chances from Ram, those are still getting removed. The crazy like just game losing crits. Ram no longer deals a complete stun on penetration and deflection. Instead, it will now slow the target by 75% for five seconds and disables weapons. 
This is like the same critical that the uh, pack target weak point applies. So the vehicle will be much, much slower as it moves. But this is kind of nice because, you know, you still will be able to give it a move command. So, you know, you can just give it a command after it gets rammed and start it moving. Whereas previously, you know, while it's stunned, if you try to give it a command, once it comes out of that stun, like it won't execute that command. So the stun was like really punishing because you, you're desperately trying to move your tank, but you constantly have to be giving it orders which is uh, very occupying of your micro. You can't do like other things while you want to be uh, moving your vehicle. So it's such a high priority option. So yeah, I, I kind of like this change. So here we are testing out the Ram. T-34 is about to come in on me. So you can see how slowly I'm moving. Still very, very slowly. The main gun on the Panzer IV also not firing. Now the critical's more off. And in this case, it did penetrate and gave a engine critical to the defense for as well, but no heavy engine crits. And finally, the bug fixes. Fixed a bug where recovery sappers cost more to reinforce than normal sappers. Kind of surprised I never noticed that. Fixed a bug where the 50 cal gunner was not affected by suppression movement penalties. Fixed an issue where smoke and anti tank grenades for recovery sappers would share a cooldown. Fixed an issue where a destroyed Hetzer would give a heavy tank destroyed announcement. Fix an issue where the Royal Artillery Coordinated Barrage would not drop warning flares in the target zone when activated. A huge thank you goes out to my Patreon backers for helping support the production of these videos.